Um, my name is Matt Bloomberg. I'm a product manager on the Chrome team, and today I'm going to talk about Chrome browser in the enterprise. Uh, I'll leave some time at the end for Q&A, and uh, also note that we have a uh, space, the Android and Chrome sandbox in Moscone on the third floor, so please feel to drop, uh, stop by there tomorrow if you have time. So this is just a quick overview of the agenda. Um, again, really just going to um, cover a lot of the uh, features for Chrome in the enterprise, and uh, again, happy to take questions at the end. So um, first, we're going to kind of cover why would your company want to switch to Chrome? What are some of the benefits of using Chrome in your enterprise? By a show of hands, who's using Chrome today at, at the office? OK, so mission accomplished. Um, so starting off with our key pillars, um, every feature that we design uh, has these key pillars in mind. So when we start with speed, we know speed is very important. And it's uh, every second counts when you're trying to complete a task. And we want Chrome to be as responsive and conservative with system resources as possible. Uh, from a simplicity perspective, we want to delight our users and optimize for predictability with concise actions and solutions. And we know security is one of the most critical areas for enterprises. And we want to be as transparent regarding security and privacy by ensuring users are informed in non-technical terms. I'm sure you've seen all snap or green padlocks, uh, red lines if the certificates aren't valid, uh, in the Omnibox. Uh, and we safeguard our users by allowing them, by letting them know that they're protected as well as warn them before reaching malicious sites. And from a manageability perspective, we want to give IT administrators every bit of control over their end users' experience as possible. So in the old days, you'd have a native app for opening PDFs and another one for spreadsheets, another one for, for documents, and so on. But we really see the web browser as a window into all of your enterprise applications in the future. Software upgrades can be deployed with a simple refresh of the web page. Chrome offers a better experience for users, complete manageability for IT, and the latest web technology for developers to build on top of. So I'm sure many of you checked your phone in the morning, maybe went on your laptop uh, and got some things done before coming to the conference. Um, maybe throughout a normal day in between meetings, you go to your desk and have a desktop PC there. In the evening, maybe you check some emails on a, work, on a computer at home or on a tablet. Um, the browser becomes the universal platform across all of these devices. And what they have in common is that they're all connected. The platforms may differ, but why shouldn't your experience uh, be seamless across every device you use? By signing into Chrome, services like Chrome Sync will al allow users to easily and quickly pick up right where they left off. So today, every application must run on every device. Your users expect that, and they expect it to be seamless across corporate issue and oftentimes personal devices. Uh, the fact is that today's information workers on average use 10 web apps across three devices to do his or her job. Today's best business applications like Salesforce and G Suite, Workday, and many others are all web-based. Even traditional, web, uh, traditional enterprise vendors like SAP are now building their, their, web, their new applications for the web based on HTML5, and they work very well in Chrome. To empower your employees with today's best business tools, companies have to use the browser that is the best support with the latest web standards like HTML5. We're also seeing a big uptake in enterprise development of progressive web apps. You may have heard more about this in other uh, uh, sessions at the conference. But all of the features that you have with native apps, such as push notifications, offline functionality, adding icons to home screens on mobile devices, launching in full screen mode, access to the clipboard, all of these things are possible uh, in progressive web apps. And they can run across any device, mobile or desktop. So when we launched Chrome in September of 2008, the world said, who needs another web browser? And if we jump forward to today, we have more than 2 billion users across Chrome desktop and mobile. We are very close, uh, I believe, today or tomorrow, launching Chrome 57. And we, will, uh, and we are seeing HTML5 and progressive web app adoption continue to gain traction in the enterprise. Uh, specifically, uh, in the past couple of years, Chrome has seen hyper growth in the enterprise space. We're making large investments on our enterprise engineering resources, as well as working closely with our largest enterprise partners uh, who are building SaaS solutions and aligning on priorities to ensure those solutions work very well. And we're building the right features uh, for the future for our enterprise customers. 
It's just an overview here of security and privacy. So we, we obviously take security very uh, seriously. And secure technologies like san safe browsing, sandboxing, and our ability to quickly deploy updates are what makes Chrome the most secure browser available. Acuvent, which is now known as Optive, wrote an extensive report comparing Chrome browser security to other browsers in the industry several years ago. And it goes into very much a lot of depth on what the differentiators are from a Chrome security perspective. So feel free to review that, that report. Uh, we also have updated content on our website regarding Chrome security features. And we will be refreshing the security report in the coming months, so you can watch out for that as well. So as I mentioned, security is one of our key pillars. And Chrome was designed with security built in. And it's always top of mind during all of our feature development uh, processes. So just to highlight a few of these features, Chrome now offers the ability to generate safe and easy to use passwords. So these are passwords that you don't have to remember and you don't really need to know, but they're accessible at any time. Chrome visually reassures users that we're protecting them at the Omni box at the top of the screen. And as I'll talk about in a minute more on safe browsing, we'll warn users when they visit malicious sites. We do research to make sure these warnings are easy to understand and not scary and complicated to end users. If Chrome detects that a user's settings have been tampered with by malware, we'll reset those settings automatically. No tickets to help desk, no, no other trouble tickets needed. So you always have full control over the browser experience. We also offer new features such as ephemeral profiles, which allows users to have the full Chrome ex signed in experience, extensions, customizations, all of those things can be uh, used as a normal user. But that profile can automatically be wiped when they close out Chrome. So we're seeing a lot of interest in this in, in new environments, such as retail, hotels, where there's shared PCs, uh, where that's a common scenario. You can also set a passphrase for syncing your data with Chrome to offer your end-to-end -end encryption of, of that data. Chrome also leads, uh, Chrome's PDF reader also leads industry uh, in the protection of untrustworthy PDFs. So it's a very, very secure way to view PDFs. So earlier I mentioned how Chrome updates are a critical piece of our story, and the browser has to be updated to be secure. So here's what we're, so in this uh, example here, we're showing the compa comparison of speed updates uh, from Safari and Chrome. So as you can see here, uh, this data is from clicky.com, which is a web analytics company. The shape of the graph uh, can show over a period of months for old versions to get updated and die off. And you can see Safari 8 from 2014 actually is still kicking along. So this is very consistent with browsers with annual release cycles and other browsers that um, don't have automatic update features. And when you compare this to Chrome, you can see the beauty of auto-update. Old versions disappear very quickly, uh, and so does access to those known vulnerabilities. We have major releases every six weeks, and security updates can be deployed as needed um, whenever there's a security uh, vulnerability discovered. By allowing Chrome to auto-update, you won't need to wait until Tuesday for uh, security updates to be deployed. Google can deploy those updates at Google scale, so we can reach hundreds of millions of users around the world in a matter of hours. So another security feature I want to highlight is safe browsing. Safe browsing will show users a warning message before they visit a dangerous site or download a harmful app. Our scanning infrastructure also protects the Chrome Web Store uh, from potentially harmful extensions. This is the same technology that we use uh, in the Play Store. Our technology protects your company from a range of malware, phishing, and social, social engineering attacks that might try to steal passwords or infect machines. If an employee encounters a website suspected of being deceptive or dangerous while browsing the web, they'll be shown a warning message. We'll also show warning messages on dangerous downloads like malware that could inject ads or, again, jeopardize your, your corporate network. How many of you have seen this, uh, this warning message at home? OK, just a few. So, OK, good. So you're not visiting sites with malware. <laughs> so discovering these vulnerabilities are very important to Google. And we've implemented technologies such as fuzzing and cluster fuzz, which run thousands of virtual instances of Chrome, running hundreds of millions of automated tests every day. We use this data to analyze crashes and identify regressions quickly, long before any of these uh, changes re reach the stable channel of Chrome. And we know we can't do this alone. So we created the Chrome Reward Program in January of 2010 to help reward the security researchers and individuals who invest their time uh, and energy into helping us make Chrome more safe. So we've paid out more than $9 million since this program existed, and more than a third of that was paid out last year. So um, more folks have been getting involved in the, 
near term. So this, I'm going to just mention uh, a new feature that we're working on um, related to security plan for, for later this year. So we're going to be adding even more controls for our enterprise admins. Things such as location, determine security level of the client, as well as user restrictions will allow you to both expand access to your corporate web applications and at the same time offer co you, the controls you need to ensure the experience is secure end to end. So for example, Chrome support of security keys from an administrative perspective can specify that their employees and users have to be strongly authenticated to access a web application. From a device management perspective, you'll be able to monitor client-side state and configuration on, across all major platforms. So this enables the state of the device to be monitored by the infrastructure so that the state can be considered when making an access decision. The management capability will integrate with existing device management systems you already have running, and uh, including system checks, such as if the client has current antivirus software or if the disk is encrypted, things along those lines will be reported and a decision will be made as to allowing access. These are some of the examples of um, the, the concerns from our customers. Talk a little bit about speed and power improvements. So Chrome was built to be fast in every way. We monitor every aspect of speed regarding startup time, page load time, video, rendering of graphics, complex, uh, complex scripts, JavaScript, and business web applications. And we also work very closely with our partners to maintain top performance with each of their software releases. And of course, as you can see with the Octane scores, um, this is a benchmark of JavaScript speed. There's been significant improvements in, uh, over the last couple years. So Chrome is stable because it was built using multi-processing architecture, which allocates each task and every tab running as a separate uh, process. So while we constantly update Chrome with new improvements, we, quick, we can quickly solve any problems that might cause the browser to crash. So I'm sure if you've been using Chrome for a long period of time, you may have seen a, a tab crash, but the entire instance won't. Um, so again, from a security perspective, proce um, processes are isolated and they cannot talk across tabs with each other. So regarding power, over the past several releases, we've made large improvements to power consumption on Chrome, and we now have a large team dedicated to power reduction. So this is just a small uh, example of a change we made uh, on mobile devices where we can now refresh only a small part of a tile as opposed to the whole screen. So this may seem like a very minor change, but this is the type of um, ongoing effort to reduce power and energy consumption for battery-powered devices. So I mentioned the tile redraw, but there are also countless other efforts across dozens of components to reduce power consum consumption across the board. So this is showing the progress we're making towards reducing uh, power usage in Chrome. And with each release, there's been significant improvements, as you can see here. So I'll give a quick update on, on media as well, where we've also made uh, large improvements on bandwidth usage. So we know that companies use media in, in many ways. Every, everything ranging from video conferencing to now news and media and social media, which are now increasingly video-based. Everything, uh, even internal uh, communications such as training videos, company updates, are now shifting to be streaming video to enable access for employees across m multiple locations. Chrome has extensive support for WebRTC, which is used for video conferencing, and we are work and we are now working uh, hard to improve video codecs to decrease bandwidth usage while maintaining the same video quality. While I'm not allowed to share the exact YouTube stats, to give you a sense of the scale of video watch time in Chrome, it's, it's truly staggering. There are thousands of years of video played in Chrome every day. So what else can we do to improve this area? Chrome supports the latest video codecs, including VP9, to improve quality and reduce bandwidth. So as you can see here, the image on the left is clear and uses 30% less bandwidth than H.264, which is on the right. Chrome also supports DRM, which allows you to protect your sensitive corporate videos. This support is deployed through a component called Widevine, which is available across Mac, Windows, Linux, Android, and Chrome OS. We also support, uh, we now allow users to download secure content uh, and offline video playback is supported as well. When you playback videos, Chrome can also cast that to larger screens or other devices for easier viewing. So as I mentioned, VP9 will save more than 30% uh, of video bandwidth at the same quality. This can result in uh, 
so 30% savings on a video encoded at a one megabit bit rate for 1,000 employees would equate to more than a gig of mobile data savings per day. And obviously, one, one megabit video bit rate is, is very low, so it can, can obviously add up. In addition to video, Chrome has support for WebP, which has a higher image quality than JPEG at the same file size. So for companies with large internal image databases, this also can improve visual quality and save on storage. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the Chrome Enterprise Management features. So today, there are a couple hundred management features that allow you to control the Chrome experience end to end. Everything from setting a home page to force deploying extensions to configuring a proxy servers, all of these things can be deployed within your existing Active Directory infrastructure or through our cloud-based console. It's the, same, it's the same Chrome browser that your users are familiar with, but now IT can customize it to meet your company's needs. We are also now offering a 24-7 enterprise support offering should you need to troubleshoot or escalate any issues with our, with our team. Now, we, we know very well that moving to the open web is not going to happen overnight, and those legacy applications from 10 and 15 years ago that use Silverlight and ActiveX are not going anywhere in the near future. We know that you rely on those apps every day, and we want to make it as easy and, and seamless as possible for, you to, for your users to access those applications. So we've built a tool called Legacy Browser Support, uh, and this will allow admins to configure Chrome as the default browser and define a number of sites that should still be opened with an alternative browser. When, when the user is done with the legacy browser and the legacy property, it will be, they will be seamlessly, sw seamlessly switched back to Chrome to resume where they left off. No training or change management needed. So while Chrome's auto-update feature enables your company to be on the safest, fastest version of Chrome, we know that many companies also want flexibility when making these types of changes and upgrades. So you can choose to leave auto-update on to get those security fixes, uh, or you can also disable auto-updates and manage the timing of updates on your own schedule based on your organization's needs. For example, you may only want to allow updates at certain times or weekends, or you want to deploy after you've had more time to test a new release, and those are all fully supported through group policy. That can be configured uh, across all platforms. So Chrome connects to Google for tools that require access to our cloud. For example, predictive search or translate features will need to connect to Google. You, can always have con you, you will always have control to turn off these features um, and control what data is shared with Google, uh, again, all configurable by policy. So as you run more and more of your business on the web, you can use policies to define what apps and extensions get published to your employees. In an upcoming release of Chrome, we're going to be offering admins even more control over applications and extensions by allowing them to restrict which extensions can be deployed based on the permission the app or extension declares. For example, today it's very common for administrators to control applications through a whitelist or blacklist. With this new feature, uh, instead of having to kind of curate what applications are allowed or blacklist uh, applications that you discover after uh, the fact, you'll be able to restrict every extension, for example, that needs to access the webcam or the microphone, and then not have to get into um, reviewing each extension manually. This also will include future updates for extensions. So if you have a note-taking extension deployed today, and in the future it, for some reason, needs a microphone, that would automatically be disabled, um, as you won't have to monitor every single update of, of Chrome extensions. So Chrome is the only browser that is cross-platform and can be managed from a single cloud-based console. And we believe the browser should be stateless and that management should be easy no matter what device the user picks up. So we offer Chrome Enterprise support from, due to customer demand. So we understand that it's a blocker for many companies to move to Chrome if they're not able to get enterprise-level support directly from, from Google. So we began offering this last year, and um, it's worth noting that this is targeted specifically for non-G Suite customers. If you already are a G Suite customer, this, is, this service is included. And um, this is more targeted for larger enterprises, typically more than 1,000 uh, users or more. So that concludes my, my remarks. Thank you.